Hey guys, now that we know how to solve quadratic equations, we're going to learn how to solve cubic equations. Solving cubic equations is super similar to solving quadratic equations. Um, it combines, it basically combines the methods that we've used for solving by factoring with the methods that we've used for solving with the quadratic formula. There are two new formulas. Um, you do not have to memorize these formulas. What I will do when we test on this unit is if you know the formula and don't need to get it from me, I'll give you a bonus point or a two bonus points for knowing it. If you need me to give you the formula, then you just will lose the bonus points. Um, here's what they are. The first one is a cubed plus b cubed. That is going to factor to b, oops, a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. And the second one, a cubed minus b cubed, is going to factor to be a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So notice they're really similar. Here's how I remember them. When it's adding a cubed and b cubed, it goes add then subtract. When it's subtracting b cubed, it goes subtract then add. If I can keep that straight, then the equations are exactly the same. Um, just like with our difference of squares with a squared minus b squared, um, this is a situation because we're using a formula where the sign is not going to, belong, going to belong to the number on the b there. Um, these are the steps we're going to take when we solve an equation in the form, either a cubed plus b cubed equals zero or a cubed minus b cubed equals zero. Notice that just like with quadratic equations, it has to be equal to zero. So the very first thing I'm going to do is factor it. When I factor it, I am going to use one of these two formulas because, again, I should have an equation either in the form a cubed plus b cubed equals 0 or a cubed minus b cubed equals 0. So if it's a cubed plus b cubed, I use this. If it's a cubed minus b cubed, I factor it to be this. Once I have factored, because the whole purpose of factoring is to turn it into a multiplication problem, once I factored it, I will have something times something equaling zero. Well, if two things multiply to be zero, that's when our zero product property tells us that one of them has to be zero. So using that concept, I can set each factor equal to zero. Once I've set each factor equal to zero, I can solve each, th each of those new equations that I've made, keeping in mind that when I go to solve this piece of the equation or this equation, I'm probably going to have to use the quadratic formula because I'm going to be getting a quadratic equation back. Um, some things to keep in mind are what our, perfect what our perfect cubes are. You do not have to memorize these the way you had to memorize the um, perfect squares, but they are good to know and good to be aware of so you can recognize when an equation is in one of these forms. One cubed is one. Two cubed is two times two times two is eight. Three cubed is three times three is nine times three is 27. Four cubed is four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5 and is 125. 6 cubed is 6 times 6 is 36 times 6 more is 216. So those are a list of some perfect squares to be aware of. Um, now I would like to go over some examples where we're using these steps. So I have three examples. Um, the third one is going to be very similar to the first one, so if you feel comfortable after watching the first two, feel free to skip the third example or use the third example um, as a time to pause the video and try it on your own first. Um, but here's our first example. If I have 8x cubed minus 2. Um, also, so you know, I did punch out some of my calculations beforehand, so if while you're watching this you're curious as to where my numbers come from, please talk to me or let me know tomorrow in class when you have some time to work on these types of problems, um, and I can kind of show you the calculations I used to get the numbers I used, but because of space, I, I tried to do some of them ahead of time. Um, so looking at this problem, 8x cubed minus 1 equals 0. The first thing I notice is that 8 is a perfect cube, x is cubed, and 1 is a perfect cube. This is the same thing as saying 2x cubed minus 1 cubed equals 0, which tells me that my first quantity being cubed is 2x, and my second quantity being cubed is 1. Well, that's great because now it's in the form a cubed, or now I know it's in the form a cubed minus b cubed equals 0, and I know that this is going to factor to be a minus b 
times a squared plus two, um, excuse me, plus a, um, 2ab, or now I'm thinking of a different formula, plus ab, sorry, um, plus b squared. Um, now from here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2x for a. I'm going to plug 1 in for b, and I'm going to get 2x minus 1. 2x squared is going to give me 4x squared. a times b gives me plus 2x, and b squared gives me 1. Because my equation was originally equal to 0, this is still going to be equal to 0. Well now, as I was saying before in my steps, once I factored it, I should now have something times something else. And when two things multiply to be zero, one of those two quantities has to be zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set each of those quantities equal to zero. We'll notice that this first equation is linear. So all I have to do in order to add, solve it is add one and then divide by two. The second one, however, is going to be a little bit trickier. It is a quadratic equation, so in order to solve it, I am going to have to either factor it, use square roots, or use the quadratic equation. Well, since there is both x squared and x square roots are out, I don't want to try to factor this because it's got the coefficient of four, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my quadratic formula, giving me x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so that is going to give me negative 2 plus or minus. I already went ahead and simplified this expression under the radical and you get negative 12 all over 8. Remember, we will always give our answers in simplest form unless we're asked to round and use a calculator. But putting this in simplest form, I see I can take an i out of my radical. I can also say that 12 can be broken up into 4 and 3, and I know that the square root of 4 is just 2. From here, I see that all three of my terms are divisible by 2, so I'm going to go ahead and take a 2 out of each one of them, giving me negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. It does mean the same thing if you say 1i all over 4 for my other answer. So my final answers are x equals 1 half and x equals negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 all over 4. Looking at the next example, my steps that I'm taking are going to be very similar to the ones I did in the last example. So the first thing I do is I notice that, hey, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So this is the same equation as 3x cubed. Plus, 8 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2. So plus 2 cubed equals 0, meaning my first term or my first quantity cubed is 3x, and my second quantity cubed is 2. This is helpful because now I'm recognizing that my equation is in the form a cubed plus b cubed equals 0, and I can factor it to be a plus b times a squared minus AB plus B squared. Doing that, plugging 3X in for A, 2 in for B, I get my new equation or my um, original equation in factored form to be 3X plus 2 times, squaring both the 3 and the X, 9X squared, minus 2 times 3X is 6X plus 2 squared, which is 4. Because my original equation was equal to 0, I am still equal to zero. So now look at what I have. Again, the whole purpose of factoring is to create an, uh, an equation in a form that involves multiplication. The whole reason I want multiplication is so I can say, hey, two things are multiplying together to be zero. One of them has to be zero. Either the 3x plus 2 or the 9x squared minus 6x plus 4. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to set each of those equal to zero. Again, that zero product property is what's telling me I can do that. You want to know what the vocabulary is. I get 3x plus 2 equals 0. 9x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. 
and I'm going to solve each of them. Um, I'm going to anticipate that I'm going to run out of room on this slide. So again, I'm going to try to um, condense some of the steps by having already done some calculations. So on this one, I'm going to just go ahead and subtract 2 because it is a linear equation and divide by 3. And there's one of my answers. The second one, however, I see is quadratic. Uh, I do not see a GCF. Uh, I can't solve by square roots because it has an X term. Uh, I don't want to try to factor this because of the coefficient of 9. So I'm going to jump right into my quadratic equation. And I get X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So once I plug those in, I already did the math, so I do know that all of this uh, multiplies, squares, multiplies, combines to be a negative 108, giving me 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 108 all over 18, and it's really bad form for me to write it like this because it looks like this is the only piece that is o um, over the... Um, it, that this is the only piece that's in the numerator, or that's over the 18. Um, however, again, I'm going to run out of room if I don't write it like this, so I do apologize for writing it that way. Um, I do know that 108 can be divided by 36. I can also take out an I. When I divide it by 36, 3 is left. Let's see, I'll try to stick it under the 18. Um, from here... I notice that I know the square root of 36, it is just 6, so I get 6 plus or minus 6i square root of 3 all over 18. Because all three of my terms can be divided by 6, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I get 1 plus or minus, I can either say 1i or just i, square root of 3 all over 3. And then once again, I've pointed this out before, but notice I'm only reducing the three numbers that are all non-radicals. I cannot reduce that square root of 3. Um, this is the point where example 3 is going to be very similar to example 1. If you feel that you understand this uh, concept, feel free to stop the video now. If you're still not quite sure of it or you would like to try one on your own to see how you can do, pause the video now. Okay, now that you had a chance to pause the video, um, I am going to go ahead and rewrite this on another page since I do not have room on my slide that I have up here, which really won't probably make a difference for what you're seeing. But I have 20, oops, 27x cubed minus 1 equals 0. Okay, well, is it a perfect cube? You bet it is. This is the same thing as 3x cubed minus 1 cubed. Please resist the urge to get x cubed by itself. That's the big mistake I see people making with this because they're accustomed to getting x squared by itself. I probably should have pointed that out sooner. I'll have to mention that again in class tomorrow. Um, from here, I notice that my a is 3x, my b is 1, and I am in the form a cubed minus b cubed. So I can set it up as following my formula, a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared equals zero, giving me 3x minus 1, plugging 3x in for a and 1 in for b, squaring both the 3 and the x. a times b is 3x. b squared is still just 1. I have two terms multiplying to be zero, which means either the first one has to be zero or the second one has to be zero from that zero product property that we love so much. Um, from here, I can add 1 and divide by 3 to get x by itself. It's just a linear equation. Love linear equations. Super quick. There's my first x value. I notice that my second equation is quadratic. I don't think I can factor that. It doesn't just have an x squared term. Looks like, again, I'm going to have to use that quadratic formula, giving me x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I have already done the calculations for the inside of the radical, and I do get negative 27. Which I know 
is going to reduce to be I because of the negative. I know that 27 can be divided by the perfect square of 9 with 3 left. I know that 9 is just, or the square root of 9 is just 3. I do not know the square root of 3. And then finally, I know that this 3, this 3, and this 18 can all be reduced by 3, giving me a final value of x equals negative 1 plus or minus i, which again is the same thing as 1i, square root of 3 all over 6. So first result, next two results. Um, tomorrow in class, we'll go over some um, examples in this. You'll have some work time to be able to actually work on practicing some of this on your own. Also, please bring in any questions you have. Again, if you didn't understand where any of my steps or calculations came from, and I can help you with that tomorrow as well. All right. Have a good night.